I trust the conservation of mechanical energy for 100%. I may not trust myself. I'm going to release this object, and I hope I will be able to do it at zero speed, so that when it comes back, it may touch my chin, but it may not crush my chin. I want you to be extremely quiet, because this is no joke. If I don't succeed in giving it zero speed, then this will be my last lecture. <laughs> Three, two, one, zero. If a student says, I find physics boring and dull, it simply means only one thing, that they had a bad teacher. Any good teacher can turn physics into something absolutely spectacular. And this powerful rocket is enough to reach the escape velocity of 2,600. <laughs> I almost reached the escape velocity, but I crashed. See you next Friday. I have 100 demonstrations that I do in uh, 600 demonstrations in about 100 lectures. Some are more challenging than others. There is not just one that I can say is the super duper most difficult one of all. Many are very complicated. Many are not even without personal risk. You have to prepare them very well not to get hurt. You have to prepare them very well to be successful. I rehearse every lecture three times in real time with an empty classroom, with empty blackboards, and I write on the blackboards everything that I would be writing down during my lecture. And that takes about 40 hours per lecture. And of those 40 hours, there are three dry runs involved. Three complete, full-time dry runs. Why you do demonstrations? Because students love it. It's the best way to get the idea across. You see what the string is doing now? It just doesn't even want to do anything. It's sort of terribly bored. Now, now, I, now I have one. This is one. This one it loves. This one it loves. Which this, we call this the first harmonic. It's the lowest possible frequency with which the string, or the spring, whichever you want to call it, can vibrate very nicely. And then there's the next one. I don't know whether it's the next one, but there's one. We call these resonances, by the way. This is important to mention that. These are resonance frequencies of the string. Some people call them normal mode frequencies. Some people call them natural frequencies. I prefer to call them resonance frequencies. Suppose I have explained to you on the blackboard why a string can only oscillate in very discrete frequency modes. Well, suppose you don't show it like I did. That's a crime. So now you show it, and then they will always remember. If you don't show it, they will forget. <laughs> Physics works, and I'm still alive. See you Wednesday. <laughs>